just broke my serious Funko Pop. That's crazy. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you may be in the world. Welcome and welcome back. My name is Brooke, aka Brooks Moon. I hope you're doing well. Did you think I was done talking about the Marauders lore? Because I'm not. A month ago, I posted a two hour long video talking about all of the Marauders lore. The entry level of the Marauders lore. Not all of it, because if I talked about all of it, it probably would have been a six hour long video. Let's be real here. Was then asked to make a more in-depth video talking about the black family lore so that is what we're doing today only two people asked for this video but that was enough for me to want to make it so i was probably going to make it anyway i had a lot of fun making the last marauders video and you guys loved it so i'm going to be making more going forward this is not the last one by any means this is just the beginning of me talking about this hyperfixation that has taken over my life. I don't know how much of this you can see. I don't know how clear it is. I'm going to post a picture of it in my community tab for you to look at in conjunction with this video if you choose to. I have a better camera now, so hopefully that will help with the quality of this. My, I tried, okay? My printer hates me. It likes to print things super dark. I'm hoping filming this in like 4K will make it a little bit easier for you to see. So hopefully you can see this a little bit better. If not, that's okay. The Literally the only thing that's important are names here. The pictures are just because I'm a visual person and crazy and decide to make things like this for fun. So that's, that's the only reason why. If you haven't watched the Marauders video first, I would highly recommend going back and watching that and then coming back here and watching this or watch this first. I don't know. I don't control you. You live your life, bestie. Do what you want to do. I have zero say in what you do and choose to do with your life. Um, I am not going to go super, super in-depth about the characters that I did talk about in that video that I am going to be talking about in this video. So like this group of people at the bottom. I'm going to say the same thing that I said in my last video. I am not going to get to everything. As you can tell, this is not the full family tree. I don't know how much knowledge you have. There's more that goes up this way and also to the side. I'm not covering all of it. So I'm not going to be talking about every single name that is on this board. There are a good chunk of people that I am going to be talking about, but I'm not going to cover everything. If you want to read more about these people, you have uh, every right to do so on your own time. But I, for the sake of my sanity and mental well-being, was not going to talk about every single individual that is part of this family because I would have gone insane. For a good bit of this is made up by fans, uh, again, um, because a lot of these names don't have actual information on them. It is entirely fan theory that has been made canon. And all of this is coming from a Marauders fan point of view. I'm not coming from a Golden Trio fan point of view, even though I am both. I'm mainly a Marauders fan first. I used Fandom.com, Tumblr, and TikTok for a good chunk of, like, my information on this, as well as, like, just common knowledge as someone who has been a fan for since... I guess birth. I'm also going to be going backwards, so we're starting from the bottom and going up. Does that make the most sense? No, but it does for me. I think it goes without saying. We do not stand Joanne here. We hate her. I don't like her with every bone in my body. The reason I'm making these videos is because I it's my way of trying to reclaim all of this from her. I do believe that this fandom is like one of the very few fandoms on the internet that have been able to reclaim the content created by its creator because majority of the Harry Potter fans that I know, especially Marauders fans, despise that woman. Trans rights are human rights. We love gay people as gay people here on this channel. It was a weird way of saying that. So that being said, Let's get into this. So what the actual hell am I going to be talking about in this video? I'm going to give you a very brief introduction on who the hell the Black family is. The noble and most ancient house of Black is one of the eldest pure blood wizard families within the wizarding world, which pure blood means, if you don't know what that means, is that they're just wizards who married other wizards, therefore making their blood pure. <laughs> They are considered one of the sacred 28. I believe there were more than 28 bloodlines, but then by the point in which you get to Harry Potter, there's only 28 left of 
left. Pure blood bloodlines start to die out as they continue on in history because it's just like impossible for you to continue that bloodline unless you just like start marrying your brother, which like this family does do. They marry their cousins. We're, we're gonna get to that. Explaining this part of the lore out loud makes me want to scream and cry and throw up because how were all of us like, yeah, no, that makes sense. What? What? No. Joanne, go sit in the corner. The Black family in particular does go back all the way to like the Middle Ages when like the wizarding world is like at its like conception, I guess. Eventually the family does start to die out as their family members do die out by not having children. On the male side, it completely dies out, i.e. Sirius and Regulus being the ones to die without having any children. And then, but it does continue on the female side, which is Bellatrix, Andromeda, and Narcissa, because all three of them had kids. I'm ignoring Bellatrix child with Voldemort. I, the cursed child is not real to me. But as we're going to learn, the pure, the purity of the black family actually wasn't as pure as you like to think it was as we get further into this video because if there were any members of the family that went against the like purity ideology they were then like disregarded from the family completely completely like burned off the family tapestry and acted like they never existed because they went against that ideology that's how they managed to keep it here. It wasn't though. <laughs> but I am going to cover all of who these people were later in the video. But some of these freaks took the blood purity to the extreme and married their cousins to keep their bloodline as pure as possible, which at that point I'm surprised that this family tree isn't a fucking circle, but here we are. There's even a phrase on the tapestry, I believe it's in French, it, there's a French phrase and also a Latin phrase, and the French phrase says always pure. That's what it's loosely translated to, which is why the headcanon of the Black family being French exists. That's where that headcanon comes from is because of that French phrase that's on the tapestry. Eventually they like migrate to the UK, obviously, but because they date back all the way to the Middle Ages, like at some point they were French and then became British. They're also usually always sorted into Slytherin with a few that weren't, i.e. serious. They're like considered a Slytherin family. Most of the like pure blood families are sorted into Slytherin because of Sal- that goes back all the way to Salazar's like weird also blood purity ideology and didn't think that Muggleborns deserved to be at Hogwarts. That was also a fun take that Joanne had. The more I say it out loud, the more I want to, like, rip my hair out of my skull. It's also a fun headcanon that, like, the House of Black symbol was a dragon because dragons are considered, like, super powerful in the wizarding world, so they're, like, a super strong symbol for the eldest- one of the eldest families within the wizarding world. I like that headcanon. I think it's fun. I think, like, the whole, like, black dragon really does symbolize the, like, ridiculousness that this family exists in. And like that reputation that they attempted to have, which they did have for many, many years. And they would claim such a symbol for themselves, that, that like weird elitism. Also, because of how old their family is, they do are tend to be seen as these like elite posh people. They're very, very fancy. They have like crazy balls and events where other pure blood families are invited to. Usually it is the black family that is hosting these things. So you'll see a lot of like royal edits of them at these events. Um, it's basically just an event full of everyone and anyone that could be related to them because they only marry other pure blood families, which makes a lot of other people related to them in distant relations, which I'm going to get to later in this video. And because they just like decided to like cut people out of the family and like pretend that they didn't exist, they still do. Like there are still families that are very much connected to the black family even though they pretend that they don't exist so this goes for a lot of half-bloods and muggleborns that are considered part of the black family but they like were removed so like the information on how many of those people are is very very hard to find i could literally not find anything on like how distant related some of these like other muggleborns and half-bloods were in some way they are connected to a lot of the other sacred 28 families because they all married into other pure blood families. So that goes for families like the Malfoys, obviously. You have Lucius that marries Narcissa. Then you have the Longbottoms, the Weasleys, the Yaxleys, the 
the Crouches. There's so many other pure blood families that are tied to the Black family through marriage. Technically speaking, Ron, Draco, and Neville were all distantly related. I'm not going to talk about that too much because then my brain will fucking explode and I tend to just like ignore it throughout this video. So yeah, we're going to start at the bottom and then work our way up, like I said. Um, so we are starting with the seventh and eighth generations. The eighth generation isn't on here just because they wouldn't fit. Nymphadora Tonks and Draco Malfoy. That is the eighth generation because they are the children of the seventh generation. I'm not going to talk about the Black Brothers in particular in too much detail because I do talk about them a bit more in my other video, but as for the Black Sisters, I'm going to get a little bit more in depth when it comes to them just because I didn't talk about them too much in my last video. We're gonna start off with my baby, uh, Sirius Black. Sirius Orion Black. That is canonically not his full name. The Orion came from the Marauders fandom, I believe. He's canonically just Sirius Black the third eldest son to Walpurga and Orion Black and he is considered to be the heir to the Black family fortune because he is the firstborn son however he is then disowned by his mother because he refuses to give in to the pure blood ideology that they so want him to believe in he refuses to take the dark mark at the age 16 and ends up running away from home to the Potters his disownment kind of starts when he sorted into Gryffindor like I said he is the only one that does not sort into Slytherin, he is sorted into Gryffindor, and Walburga has a fucking fit. But also, Sirius does not make things easier on himself because he just continues to rebel throughout his life, pissing his mother off on purpose. But it's okay. <laughs> we love him for it. After he runs away is when Walburga burns his face off of the family tapestry. You will know from Sirius in Order of the Phoenix. He tells Harry when they're in the room with the family tapestry. Moving on to Regulus Arcturus Black. Canonically, that is his name. He goes by R.A.B. Regulus is the younger brother to Sirius and the second son to Orion and Walburga Black. The responsibility to be the heir and like the golden boy of the Black family falls on his shoulders after Sirius runs away. He then becomes his parents' favorite child because to them, they only now have one son because they disown Sirius. Sirius no longer exists, only only Regulus is now real. Long after that, Regulus does take the Dark Mark at 16 and joins the Death Eaters and Voldemort. He is pressured by his parents to do this, even though they themselves do not become Death Eaters. I will get into that later. He supports Voldemort at the beginning of the war. However, later on down the line, it is actually Regulus that learns about the Horcruxes and tries to then find them and destroy them at age 17. This does then leads to his untimely death in the cave where the Slytherin locket is being held and he drowns after he replaces switches the real locket with a fate. The relationship between the two of them is incredibly tragic. Regulus dies thinking Sirius hates him and Sirius dies not knowing the truth of what Regulus did because Harry doesn't discover it until after Sirius has already passed. It just like it's just like not not a good not a fun little situation. And also the reason that their brotherly relationship I think fails so much is because of the expectations that this family has put on them, especially their parents. So they weren't allowed to ever be siblings. They were always going to be pinned against each other to be the better one, to be the better black. And because Sirius was like, fuck that, I want nothing to do with this. It then fell on Regulus, so Regulus kind of then despised him. He felt abandoned by Sirius. I'm repeating myself now for my last video. Tragic rela sibling relationship that does exist that I didn't talk about too much in depth in my last video are the Black Sisters, so we're going to get into that now. The Black Sisters are Bellatrix Andromeda and Narcissa Black. I am making a correction. I made a correction in the comments of my Marauders video, but I said that Andromeda was the eldest Black Sister. It is in fact Bellatrix, it is not Andromeda, and she is the firstborn daughter to Cygnus Black and Druella Rosier Black. And Bellatrix, like Sirius, has all of the pressure to be this perfect version of the Black family because she is the eldest sister, um, which she does uphold the Black family name. She marries Rodolphus Lestrange, who is another pureblood and also a follower of Voldemort, and she also willingly joins and supports Voldemort without question during both wars. She then has an affair with Voldemort during, I guess, the Second War and gives birth to Delphi, but I'm ignoring that because the cursed child to me isn't real. Because she does all of this, she loses a part of herself in the process. She kind of goes crazy trying to uphold the standard for her family and for herself. So a huge part of herself is lost in the long run. But I also do think she has a big personality change 
when everything happened with Andromeda, who I'm going to talk about now. Andromeda Black is the middle daughter of Cygnus and Drella. She meets Teddy Tonks, who is a muggle-born at Hogwarts, and they fall in love, and they eventually get married and give birth to Nefedora Tonks. She leaves her family behind to marry Teddy. She knows what she is risking, but she does it anyway. She's then disowned from the family as well. It was kind of the beginning of the downfall of the Black Sisters relationship. It is thought that the three of them are very, very close as children, but then when uh, Andy makes this choice to then go and be with Teddy that it just kind of like severs the relationship that they had and that's where that shift kind of happens because now they have not only lost a sister but there's a huge betrayal that is felt by Bellatrix and also Narcissa. That leads me to then talk about Narcissa Black. She is the youngest daughter of Cygnus and Drilla Rosier Black. She is only a few years older than Sirius and Regulus in comparison to Andromeda and Bellatrix who are much much older than their cousins. Also has a lot of pressure put on her after Andromeda leaves. So she is- all three of them are expected to uphold the Black family name like Regulus and Sirius were. But of course, Andromeda says, fuck that, I'm going to be with the man that I love and you can't stop me. So because that, that happens and she gets disowned, that pressure is then put on Narcissa to be perfect because her older sister didn't do it. She does go on to marry Lucius Malfoy and gives birth to Draco Malfoy. I truly like to believe that she only does this because that's what, what's expected of her after Andy runs away. I do believe that Narcissa would have done the same thing as Andy if Andy didn't do it first. Andromeda then doing what she did made Narcissa be like, well, now I have to do what my parents want me to and what is expected of me and I can't do anything else because I can't also be disowned. Also, this whole idea that Andromeda actually confided in Narcissa before she ran away and that she was in love with this person, but she knew what was going to happen if she then chose love over her family. It is believed that Narcissa actually encourages Andromeda to go forth to be with the person that she loves and that she would have done the same thing if that's what it came down to it. So Narcissa knows what is going to happen and Bellatrix does not, which is why Bellatrix feels super betrayed after Andromeda leaves because she didn't know what was going on, but Narcissa did, which then because that betrayal affects Bellatrix so much, she kind of loses more of herself and has this incredibly big personality shift to doing only what she is supposed to do, not what she wants to do. So she gives up her free will in the name of her family. She let the bitterness take over her life when Narcissa worked through that bitterness and just continued on and kind of persevered and gave birth to a son that she then devoted her entire life to. Fun stuff, you know? We are now going to move up the family tree and cover this row of people that you may or may not know of. This is the sixth generation of the Black family. It doesn't look like it, but that's because the whole tree isn't here. Includes Walperga, Orion, Alphard, Cygnus, and Lucretia Black, as well as the people that they married, Ignitus Perowit, and Rolla Rosier. Well, Perga, Cygnus, and Alfred were all siblings, and then Orion and Lucretia were were siblings. Orion and Walperga are second cousins because of who their their parents were cousins, so that therefore makes them cousins, which is second, not first generation. Uh, but that doesn't make it better. And it is exactly what you think it means. So we're going to start off with Walpurga Black. Walpurga was the firstborn to Pollux Black and Irma Crab. She is the older sister to Alphard and Cygnus Black. Slytherin, and after she graduated from Hogwarts, she then waited for Orion to graduate, and then they got married and had Regulus and Sirius. She had very, 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 very very strong beliefs in blood purity. The point where her portrait in Grimwald Place screams at anyone who is not pure blood. So if you are half blood or a muggleborn, her portrait will yell at you. <laughs> She's not nice. <laughs> she also believed that Voldemort had the right idea when it came to like eradicating muggleborns off of the planet. So like, you know, the, if that doesn't say enough about her, I don't know what does. Across almost every sub fandom that exists within the Harry Potter fandom, she is constantly villainized. In Marauder, she is emotionally, physically, and mentally abusive to both Sirius and Regulus, part of the A plus parenting headcanon that exists. I truly believe that she only became came what she was because she was the firstborn of her siblings and she was a girl. They want to have a boy to continue on, like, to be the heir of the Black family or whatever. 
but she is a girl so she already has enough pressure on her and she is the firstborn so like there's also that they love to give the, all of the responsibility to their firstborns female or male or otherwise where i believe a lot of her anger and resentment comes from she's not allowed to reject the ideals that are placed upon her because she is the firstborn and so she just accepts it and becomes this super mean bitter person because she had no other choice or she believes she had no other choice i should say so she does because she has to do them like she believes she has to do them in order to be the best version of herself because that is the ideals of this family she's also commonly fan casted as a uh, ava green i'm going to talk about some of these fan casts i'm not going to cover all of them some of these are just random that i found on the internet and i was like yeah i wanted more visuals rather than just names on this board so some of them I'll mention, some of them I won't. Well, Perka is always, almost always seen as Ava Green in any edit you will ever see um, because she fits the vibe perfectly. But like Regulus, Bellatrix, and Narcissa, the pressure to be the perfect version of a black child co comes from one of their siblings being disowned, which then leads me to Alphard. <laughs> Alphard Black was the middle child of Pollux and Irma, sibling to Walpurga and uh sickness black also sort of into slytherin but it is believed that he also kind of was a rebel as well as andromeda and sirius were really where the two of them learned it from was their uncle <laughs> it's hard to determine how much alfard believed in blood purity because he kind of just like does what he wants later on down the line sirius actually describes his uncle as being the only one within their family who was able to like show genuine kindness and compassion so that's fun alfred was the only one who showed sirius like in the adults that are in his life like unconditional love alfred was the only one who did that for sirius any like fan inversions of him have kind of taken the idea that he rejected the idea of blood supremacy however he didn't like outwardly speak out against it like Sirius did. He looks like an evil person, but deep down he's actually really, really nice. Alfred always looked out for Sirius to the point where he actually leaves a good chunk of his wealth to Sirius when Alfred dies. He dies unexpectedly. There's like no say as to like what actually caused it. He just kind of passes away when Sirius is 17. He dies. He does leave a large sum of his wealth to Sirius, which then leads Walpurga to burn Alfred's portrait off of the tapestry. That is the canonical reason as to why Alfred is disowned by the family is because he helped a fellow blood traitor in the family when that blood traitor is his nephew. There's also a huge headcanon within the Marauders fandom that Alfred was actually gay, which is part of why he was disowned and that he is disowned much earlier on in his life than after he dies. Headcanon that actually Walpurga is the one to find out about this relationship that Alfred is in and tells their parents and thus gets him disowned. So that's funky fresh thanks and pain that's all exists in this fandom i personally like this headcanon because it gives more depth to him being disowned rather than just he left serious money i think it adds more to his character and his characterization and also i read a few different fics that like when sirius finds out about this he feels more comfortable coming to terms with the fact that he is in love with remus because his own uncle who was a good person in his eyes also was gay he feels like more connected to him and feels like he can be himself without fear alfred is commonly fan casted as an oscar award winning killian murphy so that's fun no one is safe not even award-winning actors, okay? You will be fan-casted as a Marauders character, and you don't have a choice. Lastly, we are going to talk about Cygnus Black, the youngest son of Pollux and Irma Black, and he is the father to Bellatrix, Andromeda, and Narcissa, and ends up marrying Drilla Rosier, who is another pure blood. The Rosiers are part of the Sacred 28. Much to him in canon, other than the fact that he married Drilla and was the father of his daughters and also was sorted into Slytherin. That's like all that exists in him in canon. <laughs> Safe to say that he was an, also another upholder of blood purity, considering that he married another pure blood, had his daughters, and then also like supported the fact that Andromeda was being disowned when she married a born he did care for his daughters greatly he was a girl dad a weird version of a girl dad but he was a girl dad he wanted his daughters to be close and care for each other because of the falling out that happened with his siblings after alfred was disowned from the family canonically he gives 
Bellatrix, Andromeda, and Narcissa a keepsake box where they can like keep things that mean things to the three of them and reflect on their happy memories together. Like I said, even though he does care about them more than anything in the world because they are his children, he does disown um, Andromeda when she does marry Teddy. I commonly see Cygnus fan casted as Jared Harris because of a very specific scene from The Crown that is used as a soundbite when you see Black Sister edits, which is like so funny, but I think it just fits his vibe overall, so it works. Okay, now we are flipping to the other side of the parents, and we are going to talk about Orion Black. Orion was the only son to Arcturus Black III and Melina Macmillan, and the younger brother to Lucretia Black. He was the second born. He is the second cousin to Wolperga Alfred and Cygnus, so I'm not letting that go. <laughs> time I'm reminded of it, I want to throw up, I want to scream, I want to cry because why what was the reason other than like the like fucking weird perverted blood purity ideology what was the reason there were 28 other families he could have married but he married her why why <sighs> okay anyway sorted into Slytherin obviously and it is he's a few years younger than Walpurga so she waits for him to graduate Hogwarts before they get married how kind of her he moves into Grimald Place Grimald Place is like headquarters of the black family that's where the tapestry lives he shared the same views of blood purity as Walpurga did hence marrying his cousin and he also highly believed in everything that Voldemort was doing serious claims that both his parents thought that Voldemort had the right idea about what was going on, what he was, and the ideals that he had about Muggleborns and Half-Bloods and the purity of the wizarding race. <laughs> he also never officially becomes a Death Eater. Neither does Wilberga. He left that responsibility to Regulus, his son. Commonly seen that Orion isn't as intense as Walpurga is like he believes in this shit but he doesn't go to the extent that his wife does when it comes to disciplining their children does he do the things that his wife does in terms of disciplining no but does he ever stop it also no he did believe that his sons had like a reputation to uphold for their family but he is never the one to distribute the punishments if you're catching my drift so headcanon that orion regularly speaks french that this is like a common thing Commonly headcanon that Orion regularly speaks French, hence why Regulus and Sirius speak French, because it's like the French family headcanon, and that the reason he does is because his father spoke French to him regularly and like wanted him to speak French regularly. It's like family tradition things, and he is like a man, so he has to uphold those traditions. Gender roles are not lost on this family. Let's just say that. Orion canonically dies not long after Regulus does, like they die within the same year. He His death follows a few months after Regulus is found dead, leaving Walpurga to like kind of just fend for herself and go crazy in Grimwald Place because she's now by herself. The only one there to comfort her is Creature. Unknown as to what causes him to die, but a lot of fix tend to headcanon that he gets sick with some form of illness, and that is also part of the reason why Walpurga and Orion don't become Death Eaters is because he's sick and so she's taking care of him and he's too sick to do anything, so Voldemort kind of just like leaves them out, even though they are one of Voldemort's biggest supporters, but it is canon that the reason why is because they got scared when Voldemort started doing things to gain his power, and they were like, actually, fuck this. We don't want to be part of it. You're going too far. The blood purists thought he was going too far. Whatever. That illness, like, manifests even more from the stress of the war and all of that, but then losing Regulus is kind of just, like, the nail in the coffin that kills him. And a lot of the time you will see Orion fan casted as Colin Firth because specifically his role in the picture of Dorian Gray, which <laughs> Ben Barnes, who is the fan cast for Sirius Black, was in. Isn't that crazy? This fandom's so silly when it comes to fan casts sometimes. It's like you just find people that were in movies together and just call it a day. <laughs> we are now going to talk about Lucretia Black. She's the older sister to Orion Black and the firstborn and only daughter to Arcturus and Mel uh, Melina. There is not a lot on her in general, and for the most part, I barely ever see her mentioned in fics. Like, when Sirius talks about his aunts, he's talking about Druella, not her. <laughs> she marries Ignatius Perowit, who I believe is- Perowits are considered, a, like, a good pureblood family, so she's not disowned, which then makes her the- aunt to Gideon, Fabian, and Molly Perwitt 
also known as Molly Weasley. So that ties both Molly and also the Weasleys to her here, but we're going to talk about the tie to the Weasleys over here later. She and Ignace don't have children of their own. She's just kind of like the fun aunt to Molly, Fabian, and Gideon. So that's good for them. Also stated that she's much closer to the Perowitz than she was to her own family after she married to them, which like, you go girl, get away from your family as much as you can. They're weirdos, okay? Yes, you married another pureblood, but at least there's some happiness and joy in that family from my understanding because the Perowitz joined the order in the first and second war. I haven't seen any fan cast for her, so I just made one up myself, and that was Kate Siegel, because I think she's just perfect. It just seems right to me. Any fan casts that I came up with are just vibes, okay? They're just vibes. Moving on to the fifth generation of uh, the Black family, which, as you can see, there's a good chunk of people here. There are a lot of pictures here, but like I said, that's just for vibes, uh, for me, for visuals. Um, so the people I am going to be talking about are, of course, Black the Third, Pollux Black, Marius Black and Doria Black, I with honorable mentions of Casafia and the other names that are on here. A lot of siblings in this generation. There are at, like there's at least three to four. You have a set of three, and then you have a set of four, and a lot of them went on to have children. So like you know. I'm gonna start with Arcturus Black the third. Arcturus Black the third was the father to Orion and Lucretia Black. He is the eldest son to Sirius Black the second and Hesper Gamp, the eldest brother to Lycoris and Regulus Black the second. That should say the second. It says the first. That's wrong. As you can tell, the names Sirius, Regulus, and Arcturus are family names within the Black household, hence Regulus, Arcturus Black, and Sirius Black the third. The reason I'm even mentioning this motherfucker is because he has some canon lore that Sirius tells Harry about that kind of goes into the reputation that the Black family has in the wizarding world, specifically within the Ministry, which you can kind of see reflected in Bellatrix and also Narcissa later on down the line. Taurus is given a medal called the Order of Merlin First Class for his services to the Ministry, and Sirius speculates that it's probably just because he gave the Ministry a large sum of money and not actually doing anything. He didn't actually serve in the Ministry, he just gave them money and was then given a medal for it. Given the age of this family wouldn't surprise me if that's exactly what happened. Sirius is just speculating, but he's probably right. They're one of the oldest families in the wizarding world and probably and one of the richest. The purebloods are considered the like Nepo families within the wizarding world. So if you are a pureblood, it is kind of assumed that you have money. We're not including the Weasleys in this, that it, they are the exception to that. But specifically the Black family, because they have existed since the Middle Ages, there's just been wealth that has been constantly passed along so it's a lot of old wizard money so a black to buy off the ministry is not necessarily something that is unbelievable it makes more sense in the long run because a black family is like the one to kind of like financially support Voldemort and his means to take over the ministry both times in the war i.e like Bellatrix and Narcissa and Lucius they use their pull in the ministry and also their money to get them where they need to be it shows how corrupt the wizarding world is is to also the real world. As for his siblings, I'm not really going to get into anything with them because there isn't really anything to say. There, There's not much information on either of them other than they, neither of them had children and then they both died. So that that's pretty much it. Also, I picture him as Pietro Ragasa. These fan casts seem so random, but that's because they are. So just deal with it. I'm going to talk about the next set of siblings where there are four of them. The first one I'm going to talk about is Pollux Black. Pollux Black is the father to Walpurga, Alfred, and Cygnus Black, and he is also the eldest child of Cygnus Black II and <laughs> Violetta Bolstrode, which is another Sacred 28 family. Yippee! He is the brother to Cassiopeia, Marius, and Doria Black. The information that we do have is one that I scares me, actually, um, and it insinuates, based off of the dates, of birth of Walpurga, Cygnus, and Alfred, that Pollux and his wife, Irma Crab, had their first child at 13. Huh? It is said that this is a mathematical error. I'm hoping it is. Yes, teen pregnancy does happen, but 13 is a lot for me to process. So I'm going to say they had their first kid at 16. Just for my brain, just for me, just for my brain, just for me, okay? Thank you. They did have their first kid very, very young. We're going to hold on to that 
13, I'm throwing it out the window. It's gone. We're ignoring it. But it would have been super interesting to navigate them having like a kid at like 16, 18, like teen pregnancy type and like what that would mean for them to both finish their education at Hogwarts and what that meant for who raised Walpurga. That would probably play into why she is the way that she is. If anyone else has any other thoughts, please drop them in the comments because when I read that on the fandom.com page, I kind of wanted to scream. The term is Matteo Matari. Again, vibes. Nothing else but vibes. It's not really the one I wanted to talk about in the section of these siblings, um, but I did want to highlight him because, you know, he is Walpurga's father. So, like, it's, you know, it's important in a way. There's not a lot of information on them once you get past this part of the family tree. Once you start going up, there's not a lot of, like, personality information. It's not fair for me to just make general assumptions, be like, they were blood purists, and they were Slytherins, and they were evil, because they're not all the same all of the like all of the blacks are not the same person they whatever that's like putting them in a box but also they're not real people so like i feel less bad saying that and if i sat here and talked about every single member of the black family and gave each and every one of them a personality and differences and views and stuff we would be here forever so i'm not doing that again for my own mental health and well-being and also i don't need to for the sake of this video one that i did want to really focus on and highlight is marius black marius black is one of the few people in the black family that was born a squid which means that he was disowned at a very very young age and never goes to hogwarts because he has no magical abilities assume that he's either like sent to a muggle orphanage or just like thrown out into the streets at like age 11. they kind of just disown him pretend he doesn't exist and send him into the muggle world for them to figure it out. It is stated that squibs could have magical children later on in later generations, but they themselves do not possess magical abilities. However, the magical ability part in their blood is still there. It's just dormant in them. Just like skips a few generations and then you have Muggleborns. That's why Muggleborns existed. I think it's a fun character to talk about because in All the Young Dudes series talks about how the Pettigrew family had a lot of squibs in their family in like their history, but he fails to mention that his family does have more than one. Marius is not the only one that is born a squib. We're gonna get to that. Say that Sirius doesn't even know about him because once they blast them off of the tapestry, they pretend they didn't exist. So there's a good chance that Sirius didn't even know that Marius was real. But surprise, being part of one of the most ancient wizarding families does not protect you from being born without magic abilities hence marius's existence as a character so i've seen him fan casted as lucas, lucas jade zoom in um because the last time you would see him canonically in the wizarding world would be when he's like 11 12 13 so i like this fan cast i think it works what i'm going to talk about is doria black be solely because she marries charles potter which then connects the Potter family to the black family because they had one kid and then he had a kid and then that kid was James's grandfather, Harry's great-great-grandfather. So distantly, Harry and Draco are also related, which means that also James and Sirius are related, which also means that James and Regulus are distantly related. But for the sake of everything, I'm gonna ignore it. We're gonna ignore it. We're gonna pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> Potters at this time are not considered blood traitors. I believe that they are considered blood traitors until the first war when Effie and Monty decide that they don't want to support Voldemort. That's when they're considered blood traitors. But when Doria marries Charles Potter, they are considered a respectable family for her to marry into. So she is not disowned and blown off of the family tapestry. She was also the youngest child of Cygnus and Belvina Black, but she is the only daughter to marry and have children because Cassiopeia does not marry or have children. Good for her. What a queen. I fan casted Doria as Adeline Kane and I fan casted Cassiopeia as Rebecca Ferguson because I can. So the next person that I wanted to talk about about um, in this generation is Kedrella Black. It's kind of hard to tell how this is positioned, but she she is the fifth generation. That is Cradella Black. She is the second eldest daughter to Arcturus Black II and Lysandra Black and the middle sibling to Kelly Dora and Charis Black. All three of her siblings end up marrying pureblood families, but she marries Septimus Weasley, who the Weasleys are considered blood traitors like from the get-go, I'm assuming, because they care about Muggleborns. How dare they? <laughs> Close me, that's crazy. Um, She ends up getting disowned because she marries Septimus 
Septimus Weasley. They have three sons, one of them being Arthur Weasley, which then makes the entirety of all of Arthur's children distantly related to the Black family, which means <laughs> that Draco and Ron are very distantly related to each other, but not as distant as you would think. I think if Draco found that out, his brain would fucking explode and he would have a breakdown. It's not counted because she's disowned as a Black, so she, she's actually not part of the family, therefore they can't be related. That's not fair. That's not true. That can't be real. <laughs> uh, Cradella Black is seen as K.S. Galdario, who I adore with every bone in my body. I love her so much. I'm not going to talk about Calidora or Charis because there's not much on them. Both of them marry other pureblood families and they also have children of their own. Calidora marries into the Longbottom family. Charis marries a Grouch. Two more pureblood families that are tied into this one. So we are now going to get into the fourth generation. A few people I wanted to highlight from the fourth generation, and again, this isn't because I don't think that everyone deserves to be talked about, it's just because there's not a lot of information on them, and I'm not making stuff up. Like many characters in this universe that exist with just a name and nothing else attached to them, they're just there. I, I keep seeing sub-fandoms continue to grow, so maybe at some point there will be more information on them that the fandoms come up with, because I keep seeing it. And especially as like things like Hogwarts Legacy keeps coming out, like they keep like this generation and this generation has been mentioned and developed in a way so you know people do what they want and continue to grow sub fandoms i think it's fun it's a fun way to make things your own and take it away from joanne but i know nothing about hogwarts legacy because i didn't play it because i refused to give jkr my money and also like that entire like boycott of it so you know everything i know about that game is from fandom.com the first person i wanted to talk about is phineas black second eldest son to phineas no Nigellus Black and Ursula Flint. He is the brother to Sirius the Second, Cygnus Black the Second, Belvina Black, and Artorus Black the Second. There's a lot of seconds. One, two, three, and four. Four seconds and a girl. His father I'm gonna talk about in a moment, but I'm gonna focus on him for a second. The second born to five children, which is where a lot of this fucking family comes from. Holy shit. He's the only one disowned out of the five of them. And the reason he's disowned is because he supports muggle rights. Because how dare he? <laughs> he starts getting involved in the Ministry of Magic and he starts advocating for the rights of muggles and muggle-borns within the wizarding world. And of course, this does not sit well with the members of the Black family because how dare you, muggles are the bane of the wizarding existence. Obviously, it's always been that way. <laughs> He's disowned and cast off of the family tapestry. Woe's me. It's unsure if he had any children because he's disowned, but it's assumed it, he didn't because it's considered the bloodline. The bloodline on the male side doesn't die until Regulus and Sirius die off, so it's assumed he doesn't have any kids. And again, we don't know because they pretend that they don't exist. So who knows? He might have had children. I hope he did. I hope he met a nice muggle woman and they had kids and then they went off to Hogwarts and he pretends that his family isn't real. I love Phineas's character existing in the way that it does because it shows that just because you're part of the black family doesn't mean you believe in blood supremacy, which I love greatly. But he broke that brainwashing. Commonly seen as Henry Cavill, which I support wholeheartedly. As for his other siblings, they all marry other purebloods and continue the family legacy. Obviously, as you can see, I didn't put their children here because it wouldn't have fit. But they did have kids. I think they had like two. Their marriage tie-in, the Yaxleys, the Burks, and the Bullstrodes, as well as the Gaunts that I talked about earlier. I'm pretty sure every single pureblood family is somehow tied to the Black family in one way or another. <laughs> Almost anyone who has pureblood ties loosely related to anyone else who also has pureblood ties, which I, again, don't want to think about too much because then my brain will melt out of my ears. Now we're leading into the third generation. This is where I'm stopping. We're not going further than that because there wasn't much information except when I get over here. We're gonna talk about this in a second. I cannot find who their parents are. There was no information of who their parents were. They just said these four people are related. So I was like, okay. We have Sirius Black the first, Phineas N Black, and then Elidora Black and Iola Black. The person I'm gonna talk about is Phineas Black. He, there's a lot more information on him because he is a key character in Hogwarts Legacy, I believe. So you learn a bit more about his personality in there. And 
He's not great, but he is the second eldest of the siblings. He attends Hogwarts and is a Slytherin and all of that jazz. And then after leaving Hogwarts, he marries Ursula and they have five children. Long after the birth of his two sons, he becomes a professor at Hogwarts and he hates the job because he hates the children that he teaches. And he also hates Muggleborns openly and proudly. <laughs> Not long after that, he's appointed headmaster of Hogwarts, and he's like the most hated headmaster in the history of all headmasters. And he didn't do the job because he liked the job. He did it for the status and that alone. Genuinely doesn't care about the well-being of the school, and he like lets all those decisions be given to another professor and they help him make those decisions. He was openly hateful to any students that weren't purebloods and also one year cancels Quidditch and gets a lot of hate for that too. So they didn't like him very much. He even like when he's a headmaster tries to get it like past that Muggleborns aren't like favored in the letters that go out for from Hogwarts for Hogwarts every year and that they favor purebloods and ultimately that was rejected. He's like kind of upholding the same ideology that Salazar Slytherin had when he when they founded the school. His portrait is in both Grimwald Place and also the headmaster's office and he does talk to Harry at some point when Harry goes to visit Dumbledore's portrait in the headmaster's office in Deathly Hollows. Going on to Phineas's older brother Sirius Black the first there isn't much on him because he dies at like age seven or eight and because of his untimely death Siri the name Sirius becomes a family name to like honor him and like continue his legacy throughout the other generations. Phineas does the starts it by naming one of his sons Sirius Black the second and then that carries on later down the line. And only one Sirius in the history of all of the Siriuses that exist in the Black family go on to have children and marry and that was Sirius Black the second because both the other Siriuses die before they can do that. I guess it's a family tradition. And to Elidora Black, she is the third born and the first daughter. She never married or had any children. However, there is a piece of lore that is important to her and she is the one who implements the tradition of beheading house elves that serve the black family and mounting their heads to the wall when those house elves become too old to be able to fulfill their house elf duties. Tradition then carries on for generations. Why? I don't know, but it did. We're gonna move on to Iola Black. She is the last person I'm going to talk about in this generation, and she is the youngest out of the four, and she ends up being disowned in the family because she marries a muggle. Not a muggle-born, just a muggle without any magical abilities named Bob Hitchens. And they go on to have a family of their own, like they have kids and their family tree continues off of this one. Again, because she just sound um, there's no acknowledgement of that at all. So, you know. So the last few people that I wanted to talk about are considered part of the second and third generation of the family. And they're a very unique case, a whole subgroup of the family tree that is like considered like canon, I guess because of a book that's like published in the wizarding world that exists. Let's start off with Artemis Black. She was born out of wedlock because her mother had an affair with a muggle-born, her mother who was of pure blood, and then they have her and so she is a half-blood. And because her mom has this affair, she is disowned because, she, you know, muggle's bad. She is also disowned by association because she is born out of wedlock and is a half-blood. Missa then grows up to blame her father for the fact that their family was disowned at all as if her mother had no part in it. This then makes her believe that muggles are awful and she hates her dad. Sound familiar? It sounds like Tom Riddle. She wasn't allowed to be a pure blood. That's like the same ideology that she has. It's the same that Tom Riddle has. I didn't get to be a pure blood, so Muggleborn shouldn't exist at all type of idea. Her Mary is Ewan Wood, who is a Muggleborn. He later changed his name to Blackwood, and he is a Muggleborn wizard who also hates Muggleborn wizards. The irony is not lost here. The reason he hates them is because his muggle parents didn't understand his magical abilities and like they were infuriated by them because this is taking place in the 15th century. He went on to be a very famous horticulturist, like magical horticulturalist in the wizarding world and known for his large hedges that exist in the wizarding world, which is then tied back to the hedges that exist in Goblet of Fire during the Triwizard Tournament. That's this guy. That's that that that's all him. But then he meets Artemisa, and because 
of her, she he starts dabbling in dark magic, and the two of them just kind of like echo their hatred for Muggleborns to each other, and they're just like, we both hate Muggleborns so much, they suck, and it's like, okay, cool, I guess. Spell hypocrisy without you on it, apparently. They then have a daughter named Lasanja Blackwood, who was born a squib. So the fact that they not only one of them is a Muggleborn, one of them is a half blood, they both hate Muggleborns. Then they have a daughter who has no magical abilities whatsoever. And this drives them insane because of their like ideology of like being a pure blood and if you're non-magical you're like scum of the earth like all of that that whole ideology it actually goes on that lysandra actually exposes her mother for being a witch and her mom is burned at the stake which is crazy and then not long after that she and her father disappear as does the huge maze labyrinth that exists outside of their house it just vanishes there's nothing after that which is like so random like a random piece of lore that is attached to the black family but i thought was so interesting that i wanted to include it's coming from such a small part of pieces of lore that exist within this fandom which is crazy I thought it was all very very interesting so yeah, this was a fun little piece that I wanted to include because this is the second generation and then the first generation there was like basically question marks. They don't really know. They think that like it goes back to like King Arthur and all of that. So that's probably true considering the reputation that this family holds. But you know, I hope this video was coherent in any way, shape or form. Black family is one of those pieces of lore that <laughs> is mainly explored in the marauders fandom because you have characters like sirius regulus narcissa bellatrix and andromeda um and their lore is explored a lot but i have seen a lot of fics that are are subgroups of the fandom that are starting to pop up focusing on walpurga and orion's generation because they would have gone to school around the same time as tom riddle so they pop up in there as well the family in particular is super interesting to talk about they have so much status they start as like this great thing and then they just like die out as like family members start dying out the black family lore i love seeing more and more of it and i love seeing like fan theories and i that people come up with when it comes to the family i just think it's super cool and it's super fun there's one editor in particular on tiktok that makes like the best black family edits ever and i love them i cannot think of their username if i if i do i'll put it on the screen very rarely the black sisters are talked about more i'm seeing more and more content for them um in comparison to the black brothers so that's really nice to see that's really all i have to say about this i wasn't expecting this video to be as long as it was brain rot never ends when it comes to marauders lore and sub lore that exists within the marauders i have more marauders videos planned that are going to be coming uh, very soon maybe next month I don't know. It depends on what my schedule allows me. Um, so this is not the end. This is just the beginning of the end. If you like this video, give it an actual like. That helps me a lot. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to this channel if you had a fun time. The fact that we surpassed over a thousand subs and it just keeps going up is crazy to me. So thank you. Um, I it, it blows my mind that people find me interesting. So enough to stick around. So thank you. As always, my active social media links are in the description down below in addition to some other very important links i think you should look at if you have any other thoughts any more thoughts any more pieces of lore that i might have missed when i tell you i sat on the fandom.com wiki page for this video for days that's where a good chunk of my information came from anything else to add as always add in the comments if i did get anything wrong be nice to me and just give a gentle correction be nice for yourself and remember you are loved especially by me and i will see you guys in the next one bye